All right, guys, next three phase calculation. So this one is a, a delta source and a delta load. And again, here, this is the secondary of a transformer. We have no idea what the primary is. We're not concerned whatsoever with that. All right, so I've given you a voltage here and I've given you, I tried to trip, trip you up here with, I've given, given you 10 kilowatt load uh, per phase. So this voltage right here is on the outside. So this voltage is from here to here and if it's external to the to the loads then this value right here is our line voltage so we can drop in this value for 600 volts on the line and we can see that it's 600 volts from the secondary of the transformer and it's feeding that three phase resistive load okay then for a delta we can see that our equations here are v line is equal to v phase and our I line is equal to I phase times root three. So if the voltage line is equal to the voltage phase, then we can just drop this guy in here, 600 volts on the phase. We can clearly see that this voltage here is the same as this voltage from here to here. And if we bring that in right across the phase, then we can see that there is 600 volts across the phase. I'm just gonna drop down here so we can have some room to work okay but that 600 volts would be across this resistor this resistor and this resistor over here on the transformer you can see that we have 600 volts on the line and that voltage comes right in here and we can see that across the phase we're going to have 600 volts on the phase as well okay so that value can be dropped in here Beautiful. Okay, so now that we have our voltages, let's find our currents. And again, we're going to start with our current on the phase of the load. So we're going to find the current right here. Okay, so I haven't given you a resistance value. I've given you a power value now. But we can use Watt's law now in order to find our phase current. We know that for single phase, our power is equal to voltage times current. So if we need to find our current on the phase, we can take our power value divided by the voltage. So our, our current on the phase is going to be equal to 10,000 watts divided by 600 volts. So we've got 10,000 divided by 600. Gives us 16.67 amps. And that current is right there, flowing on the phase. So let's drop this in here. So we have uh, 16.67 amps on the phase. And now we know from previous videos that the current on the outside of a delta is greater than, that's, than that what's in the inside of a delta. So this value right here is gonna be greater by root three. So our line current here is going to be 16.67 amps. And we're going to multiply that by root 3 in order to find our line current. Okay, so we got 16.67 times the square root of 3. That gives us 28.87 amps. And that's our line value. So on the outside of this delta load, the line current is 27.87 amps on the line. Okay, so we can clearly see that the current here is exactly the same, right? So this current for the line is just going to move over. And we have 28.87 amps on the line there. And they're a mirror image of each other. So we know that the current on the inside of the transformer or each of the windings of the transformer are going to have to provide 16.67 amps. So we'll just drop that in here, 16.67 amps on the phase. Okay, beautiful. So now what we need to do is find uh, our wattage and our resistance total. And then we're done. Okay, so for here, we've been doing the, the line values, right? And I think we've been using a, a black 
marker for the, the wattage total there. So we're going to do V line, so 600 volts on the line, times our total current on the line, so 28.87 amps on the line. And because we're using the line values, we're going to multiply those guys by root 3. <clears throat> That gives us 30,000 watts. Beautiful. So essentially, this guy right here is 30 kilowatts. Well, that kind of makes sense. If we take a step back, we had 10,000 watts here on the phase. Well, there's 10,000 watts here, there's 10,000 watts here, and there's 10,000 watts here. The total here is 30 kilowatts. Okay, whatever this guy needs, this guy is going to provide. But let's just double check with that phase value calculation for our total wattage. So here we've got 600 volts on the phase. So we're now using phase values. And we're going to multiply that by 16.67 amps that we have on the phase. There are three phases. So that should give us roughly an identical value. So let's see, let's get rid of these guys. We've got 600 times the 16.67, and we're going to multiply that by three phase. That gives us basically 30 kVA. Okay, these guys are identical. So we have three ways of finding that. We can just add up the 10 kilowatts, right? 10 plus 10 plus 10 gives me 30 kilowatts. Or we can use our line values, 600 volts times 28.87 times root 3 gives me 30 kilowatts. Or using the phase values, 600 volts times 16.67 amps on the phase times three phases also gives me 30 kVA. Okay, so last thing, I haven't left myself much room here, but we're need, we need to find the resistance on the phase here. Well, that's just strange, straight Ohm's law. We have 600 volts. And how much current is flowing on the phase? We have 16.67 amps flowing on the phase. And that is going to provide us with our actual resistance. Okay, so we got 600 volts divided by 16.67 amps. And that gives us 35, roughly 36 ohms. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Uh, check out the next video. The next video will follow up with an, another Y to Y or Y source feeding a Y resistive load.